Hey there and welcome to this introductory video about linear data structures. So first off, let's have a look at what is a data structure. So it's basically a way to store and organize data so that we can use it efficiently. And data structures is not tied to any specific programming language. It's a pretty generic term that exists in many different programming languages. So it's about the storage and the organization and also uh, how efficient it is. We have a couple of examples and this could be array list, it could be linked list, it could be queues, stacks, etc. And probably the array list is a commonly used data structure in Java, but we also have some other that we that we can use if we have more specialized demands. Uh, the list of applications that we could use data structures for could be uh, if we have, of course, a list of elements, if we have a queue line, phone directory, road network, if it's more complex, uh, some hierarchies, undo or redo chain, if we want to implement the normal undo redo functionality that we see in many programs. But in Java, specifically, we have something called the Collections Framework, and it is a unified architecture for storing and manipulating data. So it is Java's way to define a framework that will uh, comprise all the different data structures in it. So it defines common behavior that could be methods, operations, etc. It also has interfaces and its implementations, meaning the concrete classes that implements these interfaces. And you can find it in the package of Java Util. If we take a look at the collections framework, we can see that there are quite a lot of interfaces and classes that implement them. And if we take a look at a central uh, interface, it's called the collection. And then we have set and list and queue that all extend from that interface. And then we have uh, further interfaces that will extend these interfaces. And we have this pink color that will be a class that implement this interface. So we can see that the array list implements the list interface. We can also see that the stack class uh, extends the vector class that implements the list interface. So there is a lot of hierarchy in this framework here. We can also see that we have something called map that is not directly related to the collections that where we have a hash map, we also have tree maps in there. If we look briefly at the list and queue and set and map interfaces, we can see that first off the list interface is ordered. So the elements will be ordered in an array list and they will also be indexed, meaning that we can get an element based on its index, just like an array, basically. Uh, we can put uh, duplicates in a list in an array list, we can uh, put the same string if we want to do that uh, multiple times. We can also put the same object, the same custom class object in there. And further on, it will also allow null values. So we can provide the null value in a list and also array list. The queue is also ordered and it also allows duplicates and also null values, but it is not indexed. And we're going to see this uh, in just a minute when we look more on the queue interface. The set is a lot different because it is unordered. So we don't have this natural ordering that our elements are in, in an array list. When we add them, uh, they are unordered and they're also unique. So there will be no duplicates allowed and the set will uh, accept one null value. Then we have the map and the map is basically a key value mapping uh, used a lot for hashing. So we can create a hash map for instance it will allow a duplicate and also null values. Okay, so first off, we have something called linear data structures. And how do we classify a data structure to be linear? Usually we say that when the elements are arranged in a sequential manner, so it is known as a linear data structure. And we can see a couple of examples. Below we have the linked list, we have stack, and we have a queue. And if we start by the uh, the, the linked list, we can see the first one version here is called uh, the single linked list. And this is a data structure where we have nodes that are connected to each other by a link. And in this particular case, we only have a single link. So we can traverse this one way. So we have a head that is in the front here. And then we also have a tail that is the end of the list. So that is a single linked list. This also comes in a version called the double linked list where it's basically extended. So we have double link. 
So we can traverse this in both directions. And the good thing about a linked list, the double linked list also is that we can uh, insert an element really easily as opposed to an array. Because if we need to, let's say we want to insert a new element in an array list, then behind the scenes, Java will move all the elements uh, one place up, for instance, and then make room for this new element. But the linked list, we just need to modify the links. So we can just modify the references here to point to the new node that we want to put in. Then we have the queue, and we can see here from this image here that this is usually what this is implemented for, uh, to keep a, a queue line of people maybe in an airport. And we can see that uh, there are different approaches to implementing a queue. We have the FIVO, that is the first in, first out approach, meaning that when a person enters a queue and has to wait, when uh, the queue opens again and it is the next person's turn, then the person that entered the queue first will also be the one allowed to go first out. So when we enqueue, when we put a new element into our queue, we enqueue it, that is the insertion point here in the rear, and then it progresses. And when we uh, take one element off, uh, because uh, it can it can be processed for some reason, then we will dequeue it. Uh, the other approach is called philo. So that is first in and last out. We have a data structure in Java called uh, the stack that uh, can implement uh, the philo. And basically it is um, a data structure that could implement something like an undo redo structure. And when we want to put a new element onto the stack, we push it to the stack. And then if we want to take it off again, we use the pop method. All right, so I think this concludes uh, more or less uh, what I wanted to mention about here about the linear data structures. Of course, we also have another set of data structures that is called non-linear that uh, I'm going to cover in another video. All right, thanks for watching and uh, have fun with us. Bye-bye.